What would you do if some guy got out of his car when you pulled into a parking spot and he started banging on your window? Okay, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So we're gonna be talking about confrontations, dealing with other men and violence, and how to deal with it. Are you a coward if you don't handle a confrontation? I'm also gonna be talking about a UFC fighter who actually got punched in the face and did nothing. And I'm gonna tell you why he did that. I got this email. He says, good morning, John. I was just wondering if I could hear your opinion about a scary situation I was in a few weeks ago. I was running a few errands downtown and parked my car on the street next to the store I was going into and got out of my car and a man in his pickup truck told me that he was going to take that parking spot and that he had his blinker on and I told him, my bad, I'll go move and he rudely yelled, well, hurry up. I got back in my car and reversed it to a new parking spot and the guy parked into another parking spot right in front of me that freed up. Okay, I sat in my car for a couple of minutes and the guy got out of his pickup truck and saw me sitting in my car and walked up to my window and knocked assertively. I held my hands up and tried telling him, hey man, it was an accident. And then he grabbed my door handle and tried yanking it open, but thankfully it was locked. I was appalled and screamed, fuck you, with my middle finger up and sped off because I couldn't believe he tried yanking my door open. I circled back around to get his license plate to give it to the police, but he had already left. And the police officer who responded told me that he couldn't really do anything because there were no street cameras where the incident happened. I was very shook up and still keep having these what if thoughts, like if I didn't wait in my car for a couple of minutes and got out right away like most people would have, would he have beat me up? What do you honestly think his intention was just to get in my face? If I just remained calm and apologized to him, he would have let me go? Or do you think he was determined to hurt me? What do you honestly think would have happened if I was outside my car when he confronted me? I know you have a lot of experience with physical altercations and you give a lot of advice on confrontation management. What do you think can be learned from this experience? Do you suggest I get into learning self-defense and carry pepper spray with me everywhere? I look forward to hearing from you and your take on this. Okay, so, 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 so many things to talk about here. Gosh, so, so much of this. All right, so first of all, let me just break this down. Let's break this down and let's see how he should have handled the situation, what he could have done in a couple of scenarios here. So. The first thing that happened here was that, uh, you know, this guy told me he was going to take that parking spot and then he had his blinker on and I told him, my bad, I'll go move. And he rudely yelled, well, hurry up. Okay, so you can see what happened here is that he told me he was going to take that parking spot. So probably this guy was fairly calm at this point. What set the guy off? Well, here's what it is. He said, my bad, I'll go move. Now, why would that set a guy off? Because you're showing weakness. Okay, because it's pathetic, all right? Because he could have said, you know what? I was here first and I'm gonna take that spot. Now, it, it might have escalated the confrontation to some degree, but at least the guy would have had respect for you. Even then, if he really honestly believed that the guy had his blinker on or he doesn't care about the situation, he could just say, all right, you can take the spot. Go ahead, all right? You know what I mean? Oh, you can say something like that. Just don't say my bad. Just don't act apologetically. I'm gonna guess what his demeanor was. On his face, it was basically like, you know, just, just letting this guy bully him around. And so then the guy gets to top. That this is how you encourage a bully is by you you cowering, you backing down to them, all right? It doesn't mean you have to get in his face. It doesn't mean you have to yell at him. You can be calm and contained and you can say, if your blinker was on and you were waiting for this spot, then sir, it is yours and I will give it to you, okay? And then if a guy yells at you, hurry up. That's where it's like, no, look, you need to calm down. I'm going to move out of there and I will give you the spot, but I will take whatever time that I need to do this, right? You have to stand your ground on these situations, but you're acting polite, okay? You're acting assertive, you're acting polite, all right? You're not escalating the conversation, but you're also making it where the guy does not necessarily think that he's just gonna run you over, okay? So sometimes that creates that adrenaline, the guy gets pumped up, he's like, yeah, yeah, I wanna punch this little squirt in the face, all right? You don't wanna create that kind of scenario. Again, maybe there's nothing he could have done, here. Maybe acting that way, it would still escalate, whatever, okay? But my point is, do not immediately show weakness, all right? Don't apologize, don't act apologetic, all right? Just acknowledge. If, if someone is waiting for a spot and, and they're entitled to that spot, it's fine. You can be like, look, all right, if you did have your blink on and you're waiting, that's fine. I'll, I'll move out of there. If they're going to yell, hurry up at you, okay, you can be like, look, I will do it. You need to chill out, all right? Again, sometimes when you tell people to chill out, it makes them more mad, but it doesn't matter in this case because you are asserting yourself, all right? 
right? You're saying, look, you're not getting upset. You're not yelling in this face. You're not like, hey, don't tell me to, sh to hurry up. That See, that would be the wrong response, okay? To ignore it is the wrong response as well. You gotta like assert yourself. Go be like, look, hey, this is a boundary here. You don't tell me to hurry up when I'm I'm basically doing you a favor, all right? This is the scenario, all right? Now, let's break this down a little bit further, okay? Not, not It's not super important there. So he gets into the parking spot, okay? The guy parking spot the, in front of the freedom. Okay, sat in my car for a couple minutes. The guy got out of his pickup truck and saw me sitting in the car and walked up to my window and knocked assertively, okay? So when the guy knocks assertively on your window, you need to address the situation and face it like a man. Now, again, there's a little bit of a calculation here as, as whether it's worth risking an altercation or not, but you disarm a situation by facing it a lot of times, all right? Running away, locking the door, you know, doing, oh, you know, with your hands up, like, I'm sorry, right? Hey man, it was an accident. No, you need to not panic, not freak out and be sincere. So in this case, you can roll down the window and you could say, how can I help you, right? So you wanna hear his grievance. What is his problem? Okay, what, what's the issue? Don't immediately say, hey, it was an accident. He doesn't wanna hear that, that's weakness. It's gonna infuriate him more. It's like giving steak to a, a rat a dog. Instead, you just want to say, hey, look, what's going on? How can I help you? Right? You're not apologizing. Okay. You're not acting, you know, sorry for it. You just acknowledge what happened. You're empathizing. Okay. See, no one wants that apology. They don't want the scared. They want the empathy. Now, again, do you have to necessarily do that? There's other ways you can play it, okay? If you're trying to avoid a confrontation, that's probably the best way to play it. But you can also draw a line. You can say, hey, look, man, this is enough here. I heard what you had to say, all right? You, you can't be like pounding on my window and, and all this stuff. You, you need to go about your day, sir. You can say that. And then if he has it, you can say, look, I don't want to get like the police involved on this in this situation. But if you keep on harassing me, I, I'm not going to have any other choice than to do that, right? So again, you have to be, say that in a firm way or, I mean, if you really want to, you can go out, get out of your car, face him, and then basically say, hey, all right, if you want to go, let's go. I don't recommend that approach, okay? It's just not good. It's just not smart. What are you proving? What, what's the necessity of it, okay? If you have to defend yourself, then it's different, okay? Does this make sense so far, guys, okay? The whole idea is that you always need to make analytical decisions based on your logic and reason and thinking about what is your objective, what are you trying to accomplish here, okay? Do you really want to get in a fight with this guy that's a hothead over over nothing? I don't know, maybe if you're like twice as big of him, you're like, I don't care. There's still some risk. What if he has a weapon? What if all these things? So you have to be smart about this, okay? And if you act weak, you're going to invite bullying, okay? So you have to be assertive, but you have to be empathetic. That's the key thing when you want to disarm a situation. You, you shouldn't have gotten to the point where he's pulling on your door handle, okay? What I would do in that case is I would unlock my door and I would get out, okay? And I would say, what is your issue? And then listen to him and then hear what he has to say and then respond from there empathetically, okay? Now, if he continues, or if he does something to my car or something like that, then there might be a problem, okay? Then I'm going to stand up for myself. I'm gonna assert myself. I'm gonna protect my property in that case. I'm gonna assess the situation. I'm gonna look at how big he is. I'm gonna look at, does it look like he's the kind of guy that might have a gun or a weapon on him? And I'm gonna you know, look at what are my surroundings, where are other people, what's likely to happen in this scenario? And I'm gonna decide but I'm not just gonna let someone push me around. And if he does, I'm gonna be ready, right? I'm gonna be ready to fight him, but I'm not gonna throw a punch at him. I'm not gonna, you know, escalate it that way, but I'm gonna be ready. That's what I'm gonna do, okay? If you wanna just drive away without escalating any further, that's also fine, but let's not get it to the point. See, the problem is getting it to the point where the guy's pulling on the door handle. All right, I know I'm seeming to overanalyze this, but I want you to understand that the different ways you can handle this situation, okay? The thing here is, again, calling the police on him, probably not a smart idea either because he didn't really commit a crime. He didn't even assault you. So there's probably something that they could be written up for, but not a good idea, especially to get someone charged with a minor crime where they're going to get out <laughs> and then they're going to maybe find you like, eh, eh, I wouldn't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. Handle that like a, a man. You know what I mean? So he says here, he asks about um, what happened if I didn't get wait in my car a couple of minutes and got right out just to make most people have, would he have beat me up? Probably not, man. He probably would not have beaten you up. It's probably because he saw you sitting in the car. He probably thought something in his head about what you're talking shit about him or something, or he thought you were scared of him or whatever. And he saw that as an opportunity. If you just got right out of your car, like nothing happened, didn't make it a big deal at all, okay? Like if you feel like he's a, he's pissed off and he might do something that you could, or you see him walking towards you and you walk towards him and you say, hey, <laughs> hey man, you know, I I didn't see you there. You know, it looks like we both got a spot. So it's, it's all good, man. You, 
you got to expect what's going to come and you got to face these things as a man. You can't just be running away or locking yourself in your car. Okay. It's different in different situations, but in this situation, one little thing like this, who knows? And if you're going in, you know, you leave your car, you go into a public place, very, very unlikely that he's going to beat you up. Okay. Very, very unlikely. And who says he's going to beat you up? You need to defend yourself. All right. So, so you probably do need to learn some kind of defense there. And, and sometimes you just got to get beat up in life. Okay. <laughs> I just, sometimes you just got to take your licks. Sometimes shit's going to happen to you, all right? You can't be afraid that shit's going to happen to you everywhere you go. It could happen, okay? But the more cowardly you are and the more that you don't face up to things, the more people are going to bully you, just like in high school, okay? Because you're you're showing so much weakness, all right? Now, what do I think his intention was? I think he was just having a bad day and he wanted to bully you, basically, all right? So he says to just get in my face or and if I just remain calm, apologize to him, would he have let me go? Okay, so this is the big mistake. Do not apologize. Why do I have to always say this to you guys? Okay, by the way, if you want some lessons on this kind of stuff, join the Bulldog Mindset membership. There's a link down below, $7 for the first month. If you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. So it's totally free, basically. All right, I've got stuff on dating, women, relationships, on investing, money, even crypto stuff, building a business, become financially independent, all the fitness stuff, all the mindset stuff, all the these kind of things that I go really into depth in the membership and there's a live stream and all kinds of stuff. Just go check it out for $7 that you can get back if you don't like it. Okay. It's worth it for you. Okay. So now as far as apologizing, right? Do not apologize. It shows too much weakness. Okay. It is a bad, bad move. All right. If you got out of the car, okay, remain calm and apologize to him. That's going to more likely cause a confrontation. Do not apologize. Okay. Instead, acknowledge. It's better to acknowledge than to apologize. Acknowledge. All right. Recount the facts. Imagine someone does something wrong to you. Do you want them to say, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. Right? No. You want them to acknowledge what they did. That, that's more meaningful to say uh, and to, uh, to understand how it made you feel. That's more meaningful, okay? Again, you're dealing with a crazy kind of redneckish probably guy, so you gotta dumb it down, all right? So don't apologize though. Never apologize, explain or complain. One of my principles. All right, so what do you honestly think would have happened if I was outside my car and he confronted me? I don't know, I don't care, it doesn't matter. You have to face life, man. You cannot be a fucking coward, okay? Uh, maybe he, he's probably not gonna kill you. <laughs> Okay, you you get maybe get in a fight, all right, and then he goes to jail. Probably that's probably what happens, and he's off the streets for a while at least. You know, I, I don't know. So he says, I, I know you have a lot of experience with physical altercations. So what can be learned from experience? Do I suggest? Okay, yes, learn self defense. You don't need to carry pepper spray with you, but you should obviously learn how to box. All right, good, get in there, learn how to box, or do some muay thai or something like that. As a man, you guys should all be learning how to do that. But let me talk about the the last thing about the physical altercations and stuff like that, okay? I did a video on it where this guy in this bar, you know, one of my friends was hitting on his girlfriend or whatever, and he was getting up in my face. And, uh, you know, I got right up in his face and I gave him a big old hug. We, we had a good time, joked about it. Like, you don't show weakness in altercations with men, all right? Because they don't respect weakness. I don't respect a weak fucking pussy of a man, all right? I respect a man that doesn't show weakness, but then shows empathy, right? I can joke around. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that no one's gonna fight me for a couple of reasons, but mostly because even if I get into it, I'm gonna joke around, I'm gonna maneuver around, I'm gonna figure out how else can we solve this, man? Like, the big thing here is thinking analytically about how you want the situation to come out. It's not about proving how bigger you or stronger you are and getting into fights with guys. I've gotten in plenty of fights with guys. It doesn't matter. Someone can sucker punch you, they can get lucky, whatever. Their friends could be around, you could get stabbed, you can There's a lot of bad things that could happen. You could get curb stomped. There's a lot of things, it doesn't matter if you're a better fighter. It doesn't matter it, it, to show your toughness. Okay, that, that stuff doesn't matter. It, you have to still be standing your ground in, in the sense that you're not being a coward, you're not being weak, you're not apologizing, okay? Because no one is gonna respect weakness. But at the same time, it doesn't mean you have to escalate it to violence. You can try to figure out another way. And then if you have to defend yourself, obviously defend yourself, okay? Very, very important. Now, one thing I was gonna say, last thing is about this UFC fighter. I can't remember his name, but I just stumbled across this video. And I talked about this in the live stream, the Bulldog Mindset membership, which if you gotta get on those live streams, man, they're, they're awesome. Anyway, basically the short story of this is that he was in New Orleans, all right? This guy punched him in the face, okay? And this is a big UFC fighter from the UK and he was like filming something in New Orleans. The guy was like, don't film here, don't film me or whatever. And he was like, fuck you, I film wherever I want. This is a public place. And then the guy sucker punched him, all right? And it didn't even hurt him really, you know what I mean? But 
he just laughed about it. <laughs> he didn't care. He didn't say get in a fight with the guy. He didn't yell at the guy. He was with his family. He was with his kids. He analyzed the situation. He get upset. He knows he could mop the floor with this guy. I mean, are you kidding me? Okay. But he's like, I didn't really get physically damaged by it. It was a little punch. The guy can't even throw a punch, whatever. So I just left. I just left, right? That's it. Okay, so think about it. This is peak masculinity here. You might be like, oh, this guy's a coward. What? He's not a coward. He's a famous UFC fighter, okay? He could have mopped the floor with that guy. But he said, okay, maybe the guy has a gun, maybe he has a knife, whatever. Maybe he's tweaked out, all right? I've got my family here. It's not worth it. And, he, and there's no real threat. He just punched me one time, okay? Think about that. How many people, if they told you that story, you'd be like, you're such a fucking wuss. I can't believe you let some guy punch you and you walked off. You didn't show him who's boss. No, <laughs> no, he thought analytically. He knows he can kick the guy's ass. He doesn't need to prove anything, okay? There was no imminent danger, right? It's different if it was like the guy's preventing you from leaving or he's trying to rob you or he's trying to hurt your family or someone else, different. Then you're gonna have to defend yourself or defend other people. But in this situation, there was nothing to be lost by just walking away from the situation. And that was probably logically the best move to make, okay? Because that had the least risk of consequences, okay? And he didn't back down to the guy. He wasn't afraid of the guy, okay? He didn't act, show weakness. He just decided, no, he told him, he told him, I think, I'm not gonna fight you. You know, that's it. You know, I'm just gonna go, all right? And that's it, okay? That's, so think about that. Why is that the peak of masculinity? Because he has nothing to prove. He does what he wants to do. Okay, and he's thinking analytically. He didn't let emotion get him. Even when some guy punch you, can could you stand that test? Could some guy punch you in the face and then you just decide analytically without getting emotional that it's fine, that you're that the best logical choice is for you to walk off in the situation, even if you could mop the floor with this guy? And honestly, so think about that. So anyway, that's my story with that. It's about like learning some of these skills. I talk about a lot of these communication skills and, and conflict management skills and Bulldog Mindset membership. And, and really it's about emotional control. Because you have emotional control, you'll think about these things, right? You'll think about what to do in the situation and you'll know, you'll know how to build rapport with people. Again, building your social skills, very useful in, in this situation. Because if you can game girls, you can game guys. Okay, it's very difficult for me to get into a situation where someone doesn't like me, right? Because I, I can become a likable guy. I'm, I'm a likable guy, right? I can get along with people, I can empathize with them, right? I have all these tools in my tool belt. Again, Bulldog Mindset membership, if you guys enjoyed. And if you like this video, click that like button. It does really help with the YouTube algorithm. But you guys gotta remember that you always wanna think strategically. Think about what you want the outcome to be.